The next step here is to do the tail push rod. Now, we've already got one end on here from when we uh, use this to pull the uh, tail belt through. Now if I can just find, here it is, the baggie that's got the other end on it. We'll go ahead and get that on. And we, or I, I should say, glued this push rod together two and a half days ago. So this is definitely more than cured. Uh, but if you did this, make sure that uh, whatever you used, epoxy, whatever it was, uh, that it was at least 24 hours ago. We're going to use that same SAB tool here. Uh, which makes this task way easier on the fingers and we're just going to ballpark it. So, um, I will do this for real once we get our fly bar list installed, but I'm just going to loosely set the, pop this in our push rod guide for one, just here on the heli. Whew, it was a little scary. Uh, and then I'm not going to tighten this down yet. What I want to look for here is are we at approximately the right tension? So what I'm looking for. So I've got our servo horn uh, just placed eyeballed at 90 degrees straight up and down. And then I'm going to want, and I'm going to hold this up and show this to you here. This is going to get a little cumbersome. But I want the bell crank here on our tail to be 90 degrees to here. So it wants to be straight across here. And they've even have this little white line on here to help us get it there. So what I'm gonna do is just place this on top of the servo and here and use that to set my tension in terms of how far I screw in the ball link ends. Cause I want the servo arm straight up and down and I want this arm uh, straight perpendicular to the uh, boom there. So we're gonna wait until we have that. Let me flip this this way. A little awkward, I'm trying not to scratch anything too, so I'm trying to be real ginger here and keep this all in the frame. All right, here we go. So we've got this loosely sitting on our tail and looks like we could come in a couple of turns on this end. So I'm gonna grab our tool here. Again, keep in mind that uh, we want the SAB logo spacing out on these plastic uh, links, and that's how we know we've got them around the right way. Looks like we're getting closer. We do with coming in on this end as well. So twist this in a fair amount. I guess that. Close this gap here between the ball link and the middle part of the push rod a fair amount. All right, let's get that a test fit. So again, it's really easy to bump the servo when it's not powered up. So that's looking like when I snap these on, this is gonna be pretty much dead on. So now I'm just gonna set the angle of each of these. It looks like I could use to tweak that end just a little. We don't want these to be under tension when it's just kind of relaxing here, so like that and then we use this also to figure out where this push rod guide should be again it should be in the L but in terms of where you rotate it to before we tighten it down so I got my servo confirmed there I got the bell crank looking pretty darn soup to us again this doesn't have to be perfect we can tweak this further once we get into our fly bar list and with that I'm gonna go ahead and take my bowling pliers and use those to do the heavy lifting here save my fingers And I'm putting very light pressure here because I do not want to mess anything up. Let's try this from this angle here. It'll be a little better leverage. There we go. That pops right on. And then we'll do the same here at the tail end. And with that, we're just going to cycle this back and forth a little bit and kind of figure out where this guy wants to sit. So, I'm going to sit upright on the skids for this. And the last thing we need to do is screw this bolt in. Uh, so, if I can't see, I'm a little blind from that side. Looks like it's one size smaller. Just get the 
whatever in there. Great. All right. I want to see the whole L. I'll show this to you in a second. And that feels pretty natural in terms of basically look at the push rod, move the servo arm back and forth, and make sure where this is about to be tightened feels right. Um, yeah, you don't have to go crazy on that, it's just plastic. You're just making sure it won't rotate. So let me show you on this side. So we're right through about center of the L, and as we move the push rod back and forth, push rod looks nice and straight. It's not flexing particularly in any direction. It's on the D on the other side. And there we have it. All right. Next thing we're going to do is work on the rails for the battery system. All right. The next thing we're going to do is work on putting together our uh, battery tray system. So we've got a couple of rails here uh, that we're going to work with. Get those oriented correctly uh, this way. Let me just slide that out of the way. We'll be back to that soon. Uh, so we're going to build the rail. So we're going to add these pieces here. This is our sort of lever uh, for the battery tray. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get going with that. We'll get a little bit of uh, blue Loctite going over here. Now we actually get all our screws to line up. Go ahead and get this guy started over here. Loctite fingerprints everywhere. Right, we'll get that guy right there. And our last bolt here. Tighten all four of these and then clean up this giant mess. So, next step here, this little battery piece, and this has uh, a little chamfer piece, that's how you know which is upright. So this guy is going to line up with the two outermost holes here, I'm just going to cover up that third hole, and it gets these guys and a couple of finishing washers. So, a little bit of Loctite. This way will work into the threads because I got to slide that finishing washer over. That's getting a bit ugly otherwise. And over here. Over there. And then we can go ahead and tighten these two guys here. Next, so we have those guys. We've got to get this little funky wedge piece here. It's got a sort of key piece here. If I can get that to focus. That will go in the hole from underneath, and then the wedge shape here will go towards the uh, back here. So I'm just going to lift this. From underneath, get that little key piece. You can see it right there, such that that lines up. Now, had I been smart, which I profess not to be, I would have already had this screw ready to go with some Loctite. But hey, sometimes when you're filming, thinking about other little details. So now I got to get this guy lined back up again. Okay, around. All right, so now that's all there. Let me get this screw in and tightened. There we go. So we've got the little key piece there. Tighten the screw. Just get a little paper towel and clean up our Loctite fingerprints everywhere. And now, the next step is just this bushing here. So you take this longer screw, and this is what's called an eccentric bushing. Let me see if I can get this real close here. What that means, you see how this shape is funny? 
that hole is not in the center. And that is such that you can actually sort of rotate this in here and it'll move this piece a little bit side to side. And that's gonna help. This sort of locks the battery tray in, which is sort of hard to picture when things are at this state, but essentially this little catch here will, let me get back in the frame here, this little catch here will sort of catch the lip of the battery tray. So you want this to be right up against the tray and the tray not to be able to wobble back and forth. So that's something we may revisit later um, when we're doing this with the tray. And I already have a raw, so I already have a couple of trays uh, built out. So I'll just set the tension with that eccentric piece and make sure I like the way it attacks. And if you've heard me make any comments about this being my first SAB build, and I just went, hey, but you already have a RAW. Um, I purchased that one fully built uh, off a team pilot in the area. Uh, I know well and is a great builder, so I uh, did not rebuild it. Normally, I would, if I bought a used heli, I would strip it apart and rebuild the whole thing. So now uh, you can see this piece here just sort of hinges on there. And we're good to go. All right, so next step is to mount this inside the, in between the frames. Uh, and then we've got some bolts and finishing washers coming in from the outside, so we're going to need to put some more Loctite together for that. I'm just going to get uh, things situated for that, and then we'll pick up there. Got things positioned a little precariously here, but in order to try and get the best camera shots. So, this is our tray here. It's going to go such that the brass bushing is towards the top of the helicopter, so since the helicopter is upside down. I'm going to slide it inside here between the frame rails and there is the first sort of bolt hole on here on the sides is up here and it's gonna go into, let me rotate the helicopter here. It's gonna go into here on the frame. So we'll get those two bolts in first and that'll sort of align everything here uh, such that we can, there we go right there. <clears throat> get things going. Do pay attention to the length of the bolt in each step and whether they get a finishing washer or not. Make sure you got a Loctite ready. All right, so with that, let's get our front bolt holes uh, lined up here. About like so. I've got this first one right there, so I'm just gonna grab one of the shorter bolts here and get a little Loctite on there. I'm gonna come in from the side here. It's a real delicate touch, because... Don't want to knock the heli off the bench. It's kind of... I've got like a pad under the tail boom as it rests off my table, so I'm in, we're in all kinds of danger of just knocking the heli right off the bench, but uh, don't worry if that happens. I will be sure and leave the footage in, because it'll be worthy of a laugh. Hopefully, since we said it out loud, that won't happen. All right, so now we're going to come around from the other side and get that guy in. There it goes. Go ahead and tighten that guy down. <clears throat> and again, we're paying close attention here as to which ones need finishing washers and which ones do not. All right, we're going to skip these guys in the middle, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. And Go. It's because SAB has provided us uh, our rear most ones, by the way, will want to use this slightly longer bolt and a finishing washer. And it's going to go through uh, this nice white side of the canopy I'll show you in just a second. I'm just going to leave that down there for a moment. And if we rotate the heli on its side, uh, it's going to go through right here. So, and it's a little bit longer because it's going to go through more stuff to get where it's going. And again, we're going through spacers, all kinds of stuff here. So, I 
gonna take you a second to get the bolts started. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that. Oh, I missed, that's why it's still, whoops, still spinning. Looks like I went just above the roll rail here. All right, let's give that a try. Sorry, I realize you're completely blind now. For the most part. Oh, let's get you in there. All right, looks like we finally got it lined up, so. Uh, this side now I'm not gonna send home both the furthest back screw and the front screw I'm gonna go ahead and tighten. I'll leave the other side front screw loose. I'm gonna lay it over on its side this way. Get another long screw and finishing washer prepped. Loctite there. All right, and then see if we get a little luckier on this side. So again, furthest back. Ooh, I think we got it in one on this side, so made up for it. All right, so we still have one more screw to get in and that one will be okay so it's at this point i'm staring at the helicopter and i'm going where does this middle bolt go and i can't find the hole and i'm getting very confused and I'm looking at the manual and it says there should be a hole there and i'm wondering what's going on you can see me starting to you know get a little confused here here's the thing I got excited and I installed Rob Cherry's fancy side plate covers instead of the stickers and they obstruct the hole. So it took me a minute, but I had to figure out that I needed to remove those side covers, put the middle bolts in, and then I can replace the uh, Rob Cherry side frame. So I'm not going to bore you by making you watch all of that. Um, just know that the middle bolts here, there is a, uh, a washer provided such that if, if you find when you're tightening down that middle bolt uh, that your battery rails are bowing, uh, meaning there's a little bit of a gap in the middle, you can put a spacer there to make sure those battery rails stay dead straight and parallel. So make sure when you tighten the middle ones, uh, your rails stay parallel and they don't start bowing apart from each other. Need it, but if you look here where this is, if there's a gap here, you can put a spacer before you tighten it. But this feels pretty flush here, and I think we can just go ahead and tighten without that spacer. But uh, they do include one if it's needed. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and insert this bolt through. It really just passes through the side frame here, the lower side frame, um, and it tightens against the upper side frame. So, such that now this is completely flush and hidden, and I'm going to make it completely go away here in just a second when I put this back in position. We are going to work on the FBL mount. This will mount uh, in the front of the tail boom at the back of the mainframe area. Uh, and now we have to decide whether we want the rigid or the dampened FBL mount. So the dampened FBL mount uses uh, these sort of soft dampened mounts, uh, sort of shock mount as you were. Helps reduce vibrations is the theory behind it. Uh, whereas the rigid is just a direct connection to the frame. If you ask 50 raw owners what they like best, uh, 25 of them are gonna say rigid, the other 25 will say dampened. Uh, do keep all the pieces and parts. If you do have a lot of excessive vibration issues, maybe switch to the other style uh, and see if that helps things. Obviously do all the usual troubleshooting for these things as well, but uh, keep the pieces and parts. I'm gonna go with dampened only because the used raw that I purchased from a friend uh, has these mounts on it and I've had no issues. So I can't speak to one being better than the other. I've only tried the dampen, but it worked for me. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead with with this build, but uh, feel free to try both. Uh, you know, there's nothing on any helicopter for that matter that you shouldn't be afraid to experiment with. I mean, within reason, right? Like where there are available options, obviously don't make up your own, but if they offer, for example, on the uh, blade grip arms, you know, 26 uh, or the 30 millimeter, Try both, see what you like better, see what fits your style of flight better. Uh, so anyway, getting off my soapbox, uh, let's get into uh, installing this guy. So first thing we're gonna do is take this uh, little frame piece, orient it the same way in the manual, and I'm gonna get some red Loctite for this because I don't want this going anywhere. Whoa, looks like 
some spilled into the cap. That's a mess. That cleaned up a little. Uh, and then I'm just gonna get these in red. And then screw those in to our frame. They're gonna go in the outermost here. Same thing, get the next one in red. Get rid of those threads. There's four of these total. Uh, and I should note that uh, I'm using a uh, V control setup with a Neo where my FBL is the receiver, it's built in. Uh, so I don't have an external receiver here, but if you do, this piece right here is that mount and it goes in such a way that it'll extend. Uh, when this is mounted, it goes this way and it would extend using these mounts here and you would mount your uh, external receiver back here and your FBL up here. I don't need to even install this piece because I won't be using uh, an external receiver, but I'll keep it just in case, you never know um, what the future may hold. Who knows? I've been toying with the idea of trying out uh, Futaba and a CGY. I don't even know if that uses an external receiver. I don't think it does, but if it did. All right, and of course, as always, I get Loctite everywhere, um, I think, because of the way I push it into the threads of my finger and then I forget touch stuff. So give this a little wipe, get it off all that rubber spots. All right, moving on. So we've got this piece here. Now we're gonna take our FBL mount and install that directly on top of the post. Whoops, I'll just show you the orientation. So with this piece running this way, the little curved side pieces here go here. So these four all line up perfectly. I'm gonna put those on with red Loctite as well. Don't want those going anywhere. Those will use these little uh, chamfered head screws here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause this and get that done and then we'll uh, install it in the frame. Okay, I'm gonna take this opportunity to take a little acetone to the top because we're gonna use double-sided tape on this when we get our FBL mounted. I just want this top to be super clean. You can see that it'll evaporate right off, take all the grease and oils off it. Probably do that again right before I mount it anyway because all my finger little oils are about to get on there. But all right, this is ready to go. So now we just orient it such that the curves are in alignment with the boom, like so. There's four holes here, 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 and here. That line up with our frame. Scared me because there's chamfer on the inside, but it's chamfered on the outside as well. And I suddenly thought I had the frames backwards this far along and was about to cry a little. Um, but not to worry. SAB made the frame symmetrical, so they're chamfered on both sides. So, um, I'm gonna go blue Loctite on these guys. Since if I do have to replace a frame, I want these to be not super hard to remove. Yeah. We really just get that first try, all right. Off to a good start here. in a row first try. It never happens to me. And I know we don't have a completed helicopter yet, but really this step here is kind of the end of the build. I mean the canopy gets mounted once all your electronics and wiring are done um, and there's a little plastic wire guide, but I sort of think of that as more of the electronics install. Um, so a few other bits and pieces to do, but the bulk of the build is now done, which means once we finish this step, we're going to have to test fit the canopy because it's a rule that at certain points of progress on a helicopter, you test fit the canopy and stand back and admire your work. Let's see what you think. I'll just wipe that up a little. Right, so with that, uh, we now have ourselves a completed airframe. 
Now, I know we're still missing the canopy, the wire guide, and a couple other pieces, but uh, that's all right. Uh, we'll add those in as part of the electronics install. The canopy on the RAW is uh, much like um, a traditional helicopter, really the last piece uh, that you'll mount, even though it's permanently mounted. Um, we just have much better access for all the things we need to do next. Uh, but we now have ourselves a working airframe uh, ready for electronics and wiring. I think that's a great spot to stop. Uh talk about wiring up the raw it is super simple and I'll do a little summary once I've got this finished uh, this piece here which is the uh, wire management piece here it bolts right here into uh, the side frames as well as to uh, the uh, gearbox uh, and all of your servo wires will zip tie into this channel same for your ESC uh, wires as well and it just gives this beautiful wire management channel and uh, I'll talk about some ways to sort of neaten things up coming out of each side of this uh, once I have it all done. Um, but with that, let's just talk about component selection for a second. I'm running uh, Theta Razor C1 Cyclic Servos, a fantastic um, brushless uh, cyclic servos. Um, they're available at uh, helidirect.com here in the United States. Uh, super quiet, which although isn't you know hugely important, it's just an extra nice perk if you ask me. Um, great hold, super smooth performance. Uh, I'm a big fan of these uh, as well. I'm running the uh, Theta Razor T1 tail servo um, that is also fantastic uh, and runs at a high range of uh, voltages and speeds and whatnot. Um, I have the Ego Drift uh, 4525 515 HS motor on here. Um, one of the nice things about the RAW are the varied uh, electronic builds you can be in. You can build this thing heavy and with gobs of power and run 5500 packs in it uh, with a 4530 HT from Ego Drift, for example, if you want brute force and, you know, want to roll at, you know, 22, 2300 RPM and just have this thing be just ballistic. Um, and all the way down to a lighter setup. So I like to fly sort of old man smooth 3D is kind of what we joke about. But uh, so I run a lighter motor of 4525 515. I run the 19 tooth pinion and I'm going to fly mine with 4000 milliamp 12S packs uh, between about 1600, uh, sorry, between about 1400 to 1600 RPM, which is kind of the sweet spot for my style of flight. Um, but the RAW is a great platform. You can go from mild to wild, heavy to light, you know, wherever you want to go. Uh, you can run, you know, 690s all the way up to, I think, 715s. Uh, I will be putting a, a set of Switch 713s on here. Um, so it's just a real great, you know, some helis are a little more specific in terms of the types of uh, electronics, blades, etc. that they like. But the RAW is just, uh, it'll take anything you throw at it. Uh, so you can really sort of tailor it to your taste. It's great platform, great heli. I'm a big fan. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to get into uh, wiring the sucker up and we'll come back and uh, talk about it once I get it wrapped up. Let's go through them sort of piece by piece and talk about it. So moving to the front of the helicopter here. We have the Hobbywing 130 speed control. Uh, it is uh, capable of 12S batteries, which is what I'm using. And uh, essentially the wiring for this between the speed control and the motor is all underneath the tray. So that all exists under here and it's zip tied in place. So the first thing I do is I connect the motor bullets to the speed control bullets and then I put heat shrink over that entire connection which you may or may not be able to see under here. And then I then secure that via zip tie. So there's a physical measure of the zip tie that stops those connectors from being able to back out and separate. You know, the zip ties are on both sides of the connection and firmly there. It's a little bit of a loop of extra wire underneath the speed control tray and then the heat shrink. So there's sort of two forms that'll keep that stuff uh, together. You really want to secure all your wiring here. So that takes care of our motor and speed control here. Um, with the exception of the speed control wires, there are, in the case of a hobby wing, um, two main leads, uh, one that uh, connects to your throttle channel on your FBL. Uh, the other is sort of a backup power transfer, uh, as well as the RPM sensor cable. And since I'm using a V-Bar Neo, I have a special telemetry wire going there as well. 
So because the raw has so much exposed sort of through the side of the canopy area here, I've gone ahead and put what we call wire loom here on those connections from the speed control. Now, that all it does is, well, it protects them a little bit against chafing, but more than anything else, it makes all those brightly colored wire goes away. Right? I've got kind of a black and white themed helicopter here. I don't want to see a bunch of colored servo wires through the side of the frame. So to keep it neat, keep the wires bundled, uh, they're all inside this wire loom. The wire loom stops about right here, and since it's captured by a zip tie here, it's not going anywhere. So it's really only the exposed parts of the wire I need to put in a loom. Uh, and then, speaking of looms, I also put one on these two cyclic servos. Uh, it just bundles these two wires together, and then because there is a zip tie down the cable tray here with the loom, it stops these wires from being able to contact the motor cam, because obviously while this is spinning, you don't want anything to come in contact with it. Same thing on this side. This speed control is very close to the motor cam, but it can't move. It is very securely zip tied to this tray. Uh, if you use a Hobbywing 200 amp and some of the other major manufacturer 200 amp uh, speed controls, you can probably bolt it to the holes that pre-exist in this tray. The 130 holes don't line up. You could drill your own, I suppose, but uh, zip ties work just fine for me. This isn't going anywhere. So, moving down the line, we've got our cyclic servos, our motor, our ESC is connected. We've got our uh, connections from our uh, ESC to our FBO. And then all of that runs in this fantastic wire management tray here. So SAB does a great job. This piece just screws into a couple spots uh, and hides all of your wiring. So moving down to this part of the helicopter here. Uh, so the tray ends here and there's sort of a short span here to get to the FBL. I put wire loom on this as well. Again, black and white heli. Don't want to see a bunch of brightly colored wires here. You may or may not need to do this. You know, I'm super picky and kind of really got into the whole black and white theme on this. So uh, I put a little bit of wire loom here. And then you do still have a few other connections here on the back of the heli. So we've got our uh, third cyclic servo here for our elevator, as it were. Uh, and that lead just sort of crisscrosses back and forth here in a couple of zip ties. I also have an XGuard RC. Um, capacitor backup and I recommend one of these for all 550 and above uh, helicopters they come in a few different sizes what that does is you plug in your flight pack and it charges some capacitors here immediately and those capacitors have the capability to power your servos for about 60 to 120 seconds should your main battery pack lose power or your BEC and your speed control dies um, you know all things are possible right so you lose battery power you uh, lose BEC power um, what's going to power your servos. So that capacitor will take over, power the servos while you, you know, do an auto-rotation landing uh, and you have a chance of saving it. You know, the other option is you just lose power midair and the helicopter just falls like a rock. Um, so you got a chance at escaping damage with one of those. So big fan of those. XGuard RC uh, makes some great units. So big fan of using those. So I've got one here. It's just zip tied uh, to this sort of a servo tray here uh, in a few different spots. So it can't go anywhere. And then... The FBL on the uh, raw can mount in a couple different locations. The stock one in the manual is actually a little further this way towards the front of the helicopter, but there's another location further back. I do that so that I can mount the uh, capacitor here and then the FBL here. So that works out well. I've got my Neo. Let me see if I can get you a shot of this. Uh, tucked pretty tightly here. You'll see this sort of bead of hot glue here. I get all my connections tested and working, and then I put a nice bead of hot glue. You can use shoe goo as well. Just some kind of adhesive that is just gonna lock all those server connections in and stop them from backing out. Um, my FBL is just held down to the tray with some of the servo, uh, not servo tape, but double-sided tape that comes with the Neo itself. It's a 3M product, it works great. It's got a little bit of dampening and it. it's kind of soft. And then you got a few different options for antenna mounting here. Uh, they comes with a stock 3D printed piece that fits right on top of the servo case kind of an X shape up here. Uh, I choose not to use that. I went with the uh, white, cause you know, black and white heli, uh, boom mounted antenna option. Uh, this is a unit available from uh, MikadoUSA.com and they come in black as well. And maybe even some other colors, I'm not sure. Um, and once the white canopy sits, it'll cover sort of right here. So you'll just see these sort of two antennas sticking out. Uh, and then lastly, let's spin this around here. See if we can get a good shot of this. Now let's talk about our tail servo here. So the tail servo, again, you could leave this wire mostly exposed here, but I put a little bit of wire loom on it. One, I think it looks nicer too. It just sort of protects against, you know, chafing at this point in the frame. And it just weaves through the frame and then doubles back to the FBL here. So super simple to wire up. Only took me about a couple of hours last night. Um, 
I'm pretty thorough and picky, so lots of zip ties and cutting everything flush and clean. Uh, with that, that's the tour of the electronics of the uh, RAW 700. Uh, and uh, from here, we get to do the fun stuff, which is we're going to go through setup, um, which speaking of, I highly recommend, I've mentioned this already in the process, you pick up one of these uh, SAB swash plate levelers, and I'll show you how they work. They're magnetic. So you would ask your FBL to take you to uh, center trim, uh, and then you would line up this FBL with the screws underneath the swash plate here. And it's magnetic, so I can let go, and it won't go anywhere. So I have not leveled the swash yet. That's what I'm about to do. But this is the tool that you would use to do that, and you get all three screw heads touching the same contact points on the leveler uh, to set your center, and then you can use it to double-check trim at your low and high collective positions as well. Then I'll go ahead and put a pitch, blade, pitch gauge on the blades, get those uh, zeroed out, and then set my 12 and a half degrees of pitch. You may like more pitch, less pitch, entirely personal preference, um, but 12 and a half is a, is a sweet spot for me in my style of flight. So... That's what's next, and then we get to do the super fun part, which is to uh, attach the canopy, the battery door, and uh, strap some blades on it and get ready to maiden it. So uh, we'll come back uh, as we start to uh, add the canopy and other pieces, and we'll talk about uh, how that goes. For now, I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, pitch setup and uh, level my swash plate, uh, and I'll cover that in another video sometime in the future. Uh, this one we're going to stick pretty much just to the raw 700 build. So. <laughs> are all installed. I went ahead since we, uh, we last spoke and went ahead and leveled my swash plate, so that's all set. Uh, I haven't done the final pitch setup, but I can do that with the canopy on and check CG, all those things uh, still coming up. But before that, uh, we need to get the battery door installed and get the canopy on and see what this thing's going to look like as a uh, completed helicopter. Get some blades on and then we can start checking pitch and whatnot. So, uh, the battery door, I'm using the optional white door. Uh, I believe there's also a yellow and black is what comes stock in the kit. And uh, it's exactly the same. So quick installation procedure here. You get two of these little sort of rubberized feet and a couple of discs of uh, double-sided tape. More fun with that. So you get these half peeled off and stick them to the little rubber feet. Doesn't matter which side best I can tell, and then pull the other half of the double sticky off. You might need to use a blade for that. And then these go, if you look at the canopy, there are these two little circles here. So these just stick right down in there. And I think they just sort of dampen the hatch so it's not vibrating around in there. So I'll take the other double-sided tape, dealio, peel that off, stick it on the rubber foot thingy technical terms. Whoop. Launch it across the room into my saw. <laughs> Let's try that again. So you know what it's here, folks. This is the real deal. Um, that's the first thing I've launched for uh, across the shop on this build. So that's pretty good. Usually I have uh, to go on the hunt for screws or something that goes flying. All right, so now we've got those feet installed in our door. It's time to go ahead and get this in the heli. This little tab here is gonna go above your landing skids. So you slide that above, and then sort of force this between the jaws, as it were, and then it's just a, it's like two millimeter uh, self-tapping screw right there, uh, through the side frame, no washers on there. And I'll let you see the other side. I'll do the far side first. Tricky bit is getting this lined up because you can't really see what you're doing all that well. Get in there. Oops. There we go. Just trying to get daylight there so I can see where the hole is. There we go. And we're not going to go crazy tightening these, so just snug them up. And uh, if you go too crazy in here, it's just going to tear right through the plastic. So. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a crazy rain and winter lightning storm going on outside. So if you hear any loud bangs, that's what that is. All right, we've got this side lined up here. Oops. Just get the screw kind of started. Let's go. 
guy. Not using a lot of force here again. And then just snug it up. All right, that's good there. Double check this side. And there we go, perfect. And if it feels like it's too tight, feel free to back these off just a hair. It will loosen up over time. That's a little better. And there's a little bit of a spring when this tongue hits the skid, so yeah, it takes some force to close the battery door, more than I thought at first. You get used to it after a while, and my other canopy has certainly loosened up over time. But there you see uh, our battery door there. I'll show you from that side. And then from here, it's time to slop a canopy on this thing and see what it looks like. So, like we have double-sided tape and then some rubber washers. Also got some finishing washers here for the canopy bolts. And just that. He's got a double-sided tape out. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. All right, so double-sided tape circles will go on our front canopy corner. So we're going on the inside of this edge in here. I'm just going to stick that right there. Same on the other side. Peel the double sided tape off, but it'll look something like that. You can see. And then we're just going to take these two little uh, black rubber washers here and stick those on the other side once we get this double sided tape layer peeled. There we go. So now we're just going to take our washers. We're going to take our special alignment tool, aka X driver, through the hole. This part we do want lined up nicely so our screws will go through without trouble and pop that one on and then our other washer here same thing hex driver through washer on slide it down and then boom you're all perfectly aligned there so okay we've got those pieces on all right i'm just going to film cleaning these last four bolts uh, if at this point in the build you've chosen not to clean any of these bolts, you should do two things. First thing you should do is question your life choices. What brought you to this point? And uh, the second thing you should do is fly your helicopter further away from yourself because uh, at some point something gnarly is going to happen and it's going to come flying at you. I just hope you set up throttle hold. <laughs> Uh, which means that this is as good a time as any for just a quick safety reminder if this is your first kit build you're setting up. When you do your electronic setup, you will leave your blades off, just like you see here, through every last step except for setting the pitch. Um, that's when you'll have to put at least uh, one blade on. Um, it's important that your uh, speed control be completely set up before you put blades on, that you've checked that your throttle hold or Basically, the motor kill switch that stops it from being able to rotate works. Uh, in a V-Control anyway, you can actually set up a safety switch. So I have a throttle hold that shuts the motor off, as well as a secondary motor safety switch. So I turn both of them off. So I have to accidentally hit two switches to get the helicopter to spool up, which keeps me nice and safe. Uh, if you've ever seen a 700 size blade hit someone in the face, which I have had the unfortunate pleasure of, um, you don't ever want to see that, believe me, so don't let that happen to you. So be safe, keep your blades off until you're doing your pitch setup. When you're doing your pitch setup, you should ideally disconnect two of the leads between your speed control and your motor, or power your receiver with a 2S LiPo and unplug your speed control, um, and uh, keep yourself safe. All right, off the safety soapbox, got our four screws cleaned, it's time to put our canopy on. Uh, so <laughs> the first time I tried to put one of these canopies on, I had not looked at the manual because, you know, that's how we all do sometimes. Uh, and there is a trick to getting the canopy on. So obviously the rotor head goes through this hole. Uh, the trick is to orient the rotor head uh, sideways or perpendicular to the body of the heli. Take it through the main hole, go past and beyond, get the rotor head in, then rotate the canopy and seat it down. So 
much easier that way. If you try and do it any other way, it might be possible, but it will be a pain in the butt, I guarantee. And it looks like all four of these. Looks like we've got two of one length, two of another, but they're pretty close. So let's pay attention here as to where we're going to go. It looks like the two in the front are uh, 14 millimeters and the two in the back are 12. So these are the two in the back of the shorties, 14s in the front. These are going into a metal fitting in the front that has a trapped uh, lock washer, so no lock type here. You do want a finishing washer on these though. So we'll go ahead and get that on there. And then this is another one of those scare through the side and get everything lined up kind of dealios. Takes a little bit of fussing. Let's see if we get it right. And then if you lined up that little metal dog bone there, which I believe I did, it feels like I did. It's coming together nicely here. Should go together nicely. You'll feel it start to get tighter. Don't over tighten this. You will crack your canopy. Just sort of snug it up. And then you're good there. And then just do the uh, other side of your canopy. Pull this this way. Let me see this goes on the outside of that. Now this is when I always knock the skid closest to the edge of the bench off. So I'm pretty good at stuff like that sometimes. If I get my head out of the way, sorry. Looks like this one's lining up. Yeah, feels like it. Just gonna check and make sure. Yep, looks like it's popping in there nicely. Yep. Same thing here, we're gonna snug this up, but not go crazy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close the battery door again. Again, this breaks in over time, so. My face scrunching up as I try and get it in. It's a bit of a pain in the butt for a while until uh, it breaks in. All right, moving to the back of the heli. We've still got another two finishing washers and we'll go through the one hole back here. Again, no Loctite here either. We're going into a uh, one of our blind nuts here. See, the canopy's got a, quite a bit of flex to it, so you can kind of bend things around to get it aligned. Uh, just snug that up gently, don't go crazy. Last bolt. And then we'll have ourselves a helicopter. Um, and of course, because this one is the one directly in front of you, I'm hunting around trying to find the hole. Without looking. Well, I'm going to have to sort of tilt this a little so I can see what I'm doing. The canopy feels really beefy, but it uh, has more flex in it than you think. And with that, we have ourselves a helicopter. So, that is the end of the Goblin Raw 700 build. Uh, do make sure that your main rotor spins clockwise and your tail rotor spins counterclockwise. Make sure you don't have any twists in your belt. Uh, in terms of uh, setup in your FBL, make sure that your gyro corrections are going the right way so that the head is trying to stay level as you tilt it forward, back, left, and right. Make sure your tail is correcting in the right way as you move the boom left and right. And uh, double check your ESC setup. Uh, give everything a solid once over uh, before you maiden it. And uh, be sure, obviously, you've leveled your swash, uh, set your zero pitch and your uh, degrees of uh, pitch and control. With that, thanks very much for watching this uh, build series video on the uh, SAB Goblin Raw 700. Uh, I'm going to try and capture the maiden. I think I'm going to be solo, so I'll try and capture it myself, um, weather permitting. And uh, we'll see you there. But with that, this concludes our build series. Happy flying. Uh, do uh, let me know in the comments if this video is helpful to you uh, and let me know how your build goes. Thanks very much for watching all.